Hello everyone and welcome back to Nuclear Reactor Kinetics and Dynamics Lectures. Today we will wrap up our tour of Bode plots by discussing gain and phase margins, which tell us how close a signal is to an unstable resonance and thus an unstable response. Given the general form for a transfer function for a system with feedback, we know that we'll encounter an unstable transfer function if our characteristic equation has roots in a positive real half plane, but our response will also be unstable if g of s times h of s equals negative 1, which causes our transfer function's denominator to equal 0. So under what conditions will g of s h of s equal negative 1? Well, this function will equal negative 1 if the gain of our system is equal to 1, or 0 decibels, and if our phase is equal to 180 degrees, or negative 180 degrees, which is the same thing. Generating Bode plots allows us to identify under what conditions our gain will equal 0 decibels and when its phase will equal negative 180 degrees. This is important because we don't only care about if a system is stable. We frequently want to know how much margin is available until the system becomes unstable. No system is built exactly as modeled, especially for systems with electrical components, so we must incorporate some margin of stability in our designs. For example, a reactor's power might exceed all anticipated limits in the case of an especially large transient. Likewise, the phase of a reactor's feedback might change if coolant pipes are longer or shorter than anticipated. Maybe the plumber built the men's room right where the reactor's primary coolant pumps were supposed to go. Rewriting these coolant pumps around the men's room would add phase to the system's coolant feedback and probably also make the men's room uncomfortably warm, but in either case, it's important to understand if these design changes or these design imperfections would move our system into an unstable regime. Gain margins and phase margins tell us how close a system is to having an unstable gain and phase. Consider the following Bode plots. Our goal here is to avoid the point where the system's gain equals 1, or 0 decibels, and its phase equals negative 180 degrees. Let's consider the situation where our phase equals negative 180 degrees. We can identify the frequency where this bad phase occurs and track it up to the gain plot. The difference between the system's actual gain at this frequency and the dreaded gain of zero decibels is known as the gain margin. The gain margin, k sub m, is equal to the difference between our dreaded unstable gain, which is zero decibels, and the system's gain at this negative 180 degree frequency. Multiplying our system's power, or the signal, by a constant that is greater than 1 will uniformly raise all values in this gain plot. Conversely, multiplying our signal by a constant that is less than 1 will uniformly lower this gain plot. A system with a gain margin that's greater than 1 implies that we need to raise the power by a factor of km to make our system unstable. If our gain margin happens to be less than 1, then this generally implies that our system is unstable. Every system will need to shut down eventually, and a gain margin that is less than 1 implies that our system will become unstable during shutdown as its power decreases. We can calculate the phase margin by identifying where the gain equals 0 decibels and finding the phase at this frequency. The phase margin is equal to 180 degrees minus the absolute value of the phase at the frequency where our gain is equal to zero decibels. A positive or negative phase margin doesn't necessarily tell us if the system will be stable or unstable, although having a very small phase margin might be undesirable because it means that our margins of stability are probably unacceptably small. However, in general, a negative phase margin means that our system will become unstable because it implies that our system will also have a gain margin that's less than one. Now what happens if our phase never crosses the negative 180 degree line? Our gain will generally cross a zero decibel line eventually at some frequency, but our phase doesn't always need to cross negative 180 degrees. If our phase doesn't cross this negative 180 degree line, then our gain margin is not defined and our system is stable for all values of the gain. We can raise the power as much as we want or lower the power as much as we want and our system will still stay stable. Let's finish this lecture by constructing Bode plots for some sample system and finding its gain and phase margins. In this case, h of s equals 1 and g of s is equal to 10 divided by 1 plus 100 times s times 
0.25 times s squared plus 0.4 times s plus 1. To generate our Bode plots, we first need to find our breakaway frequencies. The 1 plus 100 times s term has a breakaway frequency omega 1 at omega equals 0 0.01. Next, we solve for the second denominator term's breakaway frequency, omega 2, which we see equals 2, and then we can solve for squiggle, which we see equals 0.4. Next, we'll generate our gain and phase Bode plots. For small values of omega, the gain is just equal to 10, or 20 decibels and we see that our gain turns downward with a slope of negative 20 decibels per decade at omega 1, which again is 0 0.01. Our phase will drop to negative 90 degrees at some point after omega 1, and this transition starts at omega 1 divided by 10 and ends at omega 1 times 10. After this point, our phase levels out at negative 90 degrees. At omega 2, our gain shifts from a negative 20 decibels per decade slope to a negative 60 decibels per decade slope, and we also see a small peak in the gain due to the complex conjugate components. The height of this peak is 1.25, which equals roughly 2 decibels. The phase shifts from negative 90 degrees to negative 270 degrees after omega 2, and the shift starts at omega 2 divided by 5 to the power of squiggle, and ends at omega 2 times 5 to the squiggle. 5 to the squiggle is about equal to 2, which means that this phase transition starts at a frequency of 1 and ends at a frequency of 4. So now that we've made our Bode plots, let's compute our gain and phase margins. Our gain crosses 0 decibels at omega equals 0.1, and if we trace down to the phase plot, we see that the phase at this frequency is roughly equal to 90 degrees. Our phase margin is equal to 180 degrees, minus this 90 degree value, which thus equals 90 degrees. In reality, if we use a computational tool to do this analysis, we see that the true value of the phase margin is 93.5 degrees, which we see is quite well approximated by our hand-drawn plots. Our phase plot crosses a phase of negative 180 degrees when omega equals omega 2, and if we trace this frequency up to the gain plot, we see that our gain peak takes place right at this frequency. Thus, our gain margin is equal to 0 decibels minus the gain at the height of this little peak. We can find the gain at this frequency by extrapolating the earlier negative 20 decibels per decade line to this point, where omega equals 2, and then by adding the height of this peak, which equals 2 decibels. After doing this, we see that the gain at this frequency is equal to negative 24 decibels, which means that our gain margin is equal to 24 decibels, or about a factor of 16. In this case, because both our gain margin and phase margin are positive, this suggests that the system is stable. Thus, we have finished our survey of stability metrics. There are several other stability metrics out there, such as Nyquist plots, but in this course, we'll limit our focus to the three metrics that we have covered so far. In the next lecture, and throughout the final phase of this course, we will develop an expression for a nuclear reactor's transfer function, and then apply these three stability metrics to understand under what conditions our reactor is stable.